So I have a love and hate relationship with UI libraries. There's some that I just love and there's some that I absolutely hate. However, one that I've absolutely loved using over the past few days is Magic UI. I found this pretty recently and I think it's quite new compared to the other UI libraries. And basically Magic UI is a React and I guess Next.js component library uh, that's mostly free. But what's special about it is unlike Shadsian UI and Daisy UI and Next UI, these are more heavy level components that make your app stand out and you know me uh, I think UI libraries have their place. There's times where you want to use it, where you don't want to use it. I made a video on that. I think if you want something really special on your application, like one main thing in your maybe landing page to make it stand out, I think something like this is amazing. And so let's just go through it, okay? There's some that I want to use and we'll go into, but what makes it special is these very unique components. Like I know in Ace Turnity UI, you can kind of compare it to that where it's like the same level of heaviness. Uh, they have these types of components where there's like a globe, a cool hover, a bento grid um but what i like about magic is the types of components that are unique only to it for example here we have a docker where just a cool little docker that you can have kind of like the mac over here you also have the circles over here you have the globe retro grid notification uh this one over here i don't even know what to call it but i'm gonna be implementing that and finally uh the bento grid that we will be using again this is not sponsored and they're not paying me for this i just found it on twitter and i just thought it would be cool to talk about so one that's really made me fall in love with it you could say is this bento grid over here so let's just install this and let's just see what we need to do so first things first i already have all of these so i don't need to do them you know you'd have to install these so all we need to do is is go into a bento grid.tsx so let's actually do that right now so let's go in here components add uh, bento let's call bento grid tsx and let's just call this code in here in addition we would obviously need to call this in it so let's just grab this one this is specific to this type of bento grid so let's just call that so in here let's just call bento.tsx and let's paste it over here and let's see what we're getting all right so we need a globe and a marquee so let's call it over here so globe.tsx and a mark key.tsx obviously you can see these are a lot heavier type components where they're using other ui libraries maybe like shatsian on top of what they're already doing and it's obvious right there's a lot more that goes into it so we need both the globe and the marquee so let's just grab those real quick so globe.tsx uh, installation i think i already installed it i'm not too sure let me see i'm gonna do it regardless and let's go into magic ui and let's call globe dot tsx god damn it <laughs> creating folders globe dot tsx and let's just paste it in here and we also need the marquee so oh i see what i did i just put them here by accident so let's do marquee put it in here and let's grab the marquee i think the marquee is just a uh, yeah that's what i thought it was um i already have something like this so i'm just not going to use it and let's call this so in the libs import oh oh in this we need this all right there we go and if we delete these and go back into our bento grid over here we can see that there's no more errors which is good and all we need to do i guess is just call the bento so let's go back into our bento let's see what we need to do uh what are they importing bento demo so let's go back into our header or actually Let's go into landing page. And within this, let's just call bento demo, close that up. And if we go back, hopefully uh, it should show us what we wanted to see. Um, I guess this is not moving, which is fine, I guess. But you can see we have the globe over here. That's it's just cool. OK, I think it's it's heavy and there's a time and space where I don't think it's in all applications. But I think if you want that that extra thing in your app to make it really stand out, I think something like this would be but anyways, let's just remove this because we want to build some other things. So let's just see what else they got because I didn't really go through it correctly. Kind of just skimmed through it and neglected a lot. So let's see. Um, I know that this orbiting circles is really, really cool. There's a tweet card where if you want testimonials, which I would low-key be down to, to use. The dock, which is really nice. Avatar circles. Interactive icon cloud. This one's sick. But the main thing that I want is the animated beam or some sort of border beam this would be sick but let's do the animated beam why not so what do we need so components animated beam.tsx let's do that real quick and then within that let's copy this code and let's see how we can implement this 
So here we have, let's just call this animated.tsx and let's paste this code in there. And so when we go back into our landing page and we want to call this, we can just say animated beam demo, I guess, and then close that up. And I guess if we go back into it, you can see we have the animated beam demo. Uh, if we go into it, we can kind of just see what's going on real quick. So we can see over here, right? Uh, how this would probably work, at least in objective sense, and we can go into the code real quick, is we're creating icons and we're creating lines. These are probably just, it's one image and we're just displaying the circles within it, I guess you could say. So let's see how this might work in the code, okay? So in the animated beam.tsx, this is in the magic UI folder. You can see here we have the gradient coordinates. Again, I'm not gonna act like I know it, but it makes sense, right? You need the coordinates of these. And then you have the use effect where you're telling it to do the type of thing. So I guess this is just where you want it to go with each uh, icon slot. And obviously you're using frame or motion for the moving areas, but you can say this part. So let's say we want it to be, I don't know, blue. I guess I'll change it to blue, right? There you go, yeah, okay. So let's just change it black back to gray. And I guess here's where we could update it. So the gradient start color, we can do this to whatever we want. So let's see what we can do. Um, let's get our color tool. Maybe get something like yellow, why not? Stop color, why not? Let's try that. And I think now if we refresh, there you go. So it has a nice little yellow. So it's pretty customizable, uh, pretty easy to use. Um, I guess this is pretty hard to implement, but you can see we're just creating the beams and the stroke width and stuff like that. And then when it comes time to actually putting it into the animated.tsx, here is where, uh, I guess, stuff gets a little bit more complicated. This is 500 lines of code. We're not gonna go through all of it, but I guess here we're just laying out each icon, the circle and the layout of it. But yeah, if you wanna learn a little bit more from me, then I'll leave my learning platform down below. There's a bunch of free courses on there. So if you're just interested, then I'll leave it down below. And if you like this video, check out the video on the screen. Happy coding and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.